right, I will call the fourth regular common council meeting to order. Will the clerk please say the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. All right. Roll call. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Decker? Excused. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Perella? Here. Alderperson Salazar? Here. Alderperson Spaglio? Present. There are eight present. All right. For everyone in attendance, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. 1.3, approval of the minutes from our last city council meeting on May 3rd. Alderperson Feldy. I move to approve. Second. There's been a motion in the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. Anyone for public forum? Not this evening. All right. Now we'll move on to 5.1, election of expired term for older person for District 8. Um, so just kind of the rundown of how we're going to be conducting this tonight. Um, so the individuals will be speaking in alphabetical order for their last name. We've had six applicants for uh, this position. Um, highly encourage you to please stick to your three minutes um, as well. And Attorney Adams will give a quick um, overview of how we'll be conducting the voting process for this. So we're going to vote using uh, ranked choice voting, uh, also called instant runoff voting. Uh, and we're doing that because there are so many candidates and so few voters uh, in essence. And so this is a way of avoiding having to go back and forth, back and forth uh, with ballots. Ranked choice voting is, is a voting system that allows the voters to uh, rank the candidates in order of preference. And then it uses those rankings uh, to elect the candidates that rep best represent the, the wishes of those uh, voting. Uh, what basically happens here is if, if you're, you, you vote, you, uh, the, the alders will vote, they'll make their rankings. Uh, they can vote for as many or as few as they want in the rankings. So if someone is unacceptable, uh, you, don't, you don't have to rank them. And uh, that will play a role then making sure that we do have uh, somebody who at least gets votes from, from a majority of the council members uh, to get on. If, uh, what will happen is if in the first round uh, there is not a majority uh, for any given candidate, what will happen is we'll eliminate the lowest vote getter uh, at that point automatically. And uh, the, the voters who made that lowest vote getter their first choice, their vote will then transfer to their next choice uh, down the list. And we'll keep doing that, and it automatically happens. We'll be doing this via computer. Uh, we'll keep doing that until we have someone who does have a majority uh, of the votes. Uh, so that process could go through three, four, five, six rounds. But again, because it's instant, the computer program will do that all for us uh, right at the time. It is an open ballot, so your uh, ballots will be uh, able to be seen afterwards. Uh, it, it is a, an open process. Thank you. And just for uh, record for the alders, um, the resumes and cover letters are on board docs as well. So, all right, we'll jump into the introductions from the candidates. Um, so first one is Kate Calvano. Kate, you wanna come up to the podium and introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Kate Calvano. I'm a resident of District 8 and I have been for about four years. I've been living in Sheboygan for about four and a half. I'm from Milwaukee. Um, I am in a four-person household, my husband and I, and two children who go to school on the north side. So my, my desire to join up here is basically in that this is a great place to raise children. In my, in my, in my experience, I have helped raise children in Milwaukee, I've helped raise children here, and I just want to contribute to that sort of community here. 
I've got some ideas about parks. I've got some ideas about the Mead Public Library. I'm, there are, of course, many issues that we can both improve upon and continue here in Sheboygan. But I feel like building on the futures of, and, and just sort of giving a good place for people to grow up in and staying here in Sheboygan is one of the things that I think we could be focusing on as well. I also feel as though um, a big part of my, ex my work experience has to do with working with the disabled and people with um, mental health diagnoses as well as AODA diagnoses. And I feel like there's definitely room to be putting effort towards that for public safety, the opioid crisis, stuff like that as well and to move some efforts in policing towards um, AODA and mental health um, aspects. So that's kind of a rundown of where I'm coming from with this. And if you've got any questions, feel free. Thank you. Okay. All right, next we'll have uh, David Engeldinger. Did I get that right? Darn close. All right. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Dave Engeldinger, and uh, well, for the most part, I'm, I'm a pretty much a lifelong resident here in Sheboygan County, uh, between Sheboygan and Sheboygan Falls. Uh, did spend uh, just a couple of years out of state, but uh, came back um, to raise my family here. I'm a 1991 graduate of Sheboygan South High, and a two-time graduate of Lakeshore Technical College, uh, I, I have associate's degrees in quality assurance and most recently manufacturing management. Uh, as a quality assurance professional, uh, I kind of look for opportunities for continual improvement. Uh, so I'm, I'm very interested in you know, doing what I can do here uh, to contribute to that. Um, I've been married to my wife Amy since 2008. We have a blended family together of seven children. Um, my two and her five. Uh, so we've got uh, quite a few people in the family. Uh, the youngest one is now off to college, uh, which I'm happy to report, uh, which then allows me some extra time to uh, contribute more, more to the city of Sheboygan. Um, I do have previous experience in a elected official position in Sheboygan Falls. I was elected there as alderman for District 3 back in 2004. Um, I resigned that when I moved outside of the city limits uh, at the end of 2005. Uh, but while there, I was uh, on the committees of public safety and public health and welfare, uh, which is just another term for the licensing committee, which is what I understand the opening uh, for this Alderman position would be for. Um, I think there are some great opportunities uh, here in Sheboygan and you know, I'm very interested in contributing to whether it be looking at affordable housing, uh, business opportunities. Uh, my two girls are now in their 20s. They both still live here in the city of Sheboygan. And, uh, you know, I think there's some great opportunities for them. And I'm interested in looking into the future so that this is also a great place for them uh, to stay, live, and raise their own families. I have one granddaughter who's five now and another grandchild on the way. So I wanna see this become uh, a great community for not only myself, but also for the next generation. And uh, in closing, uh, let me just also say thanks to the other candidates here. It's, it's really encouraging to see some interest in becoming a part of this. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. All right. Next we have Leslie Laster. Good evening, thank you for your time. Again, my name is Leslie Laster and I'm running for the vacant seat in District 8 because I believe in being this part of something bigger. I've never served in this capacity before, which brings a fresh perspective and eagerness to learn, grow and fulfill the duties that's expected by the council and the community. I have a desire to contribute to the process of setting governing policies, working with our mayor and city administrator to spend taxpayers' dollars wisely, ethically and morally, and sitting on designated committees as well, as I have the understanding of the great responsibility this brings. 
As you can see from my resume, I work extensively in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and believe strongly in being a voice for the voiceless, but more importantly, empowering those who feel they have no voice to be heard and to use it. Hearing from the citizens of Sheboygan in our respective districts is one step, but also listening to what it is they need and have to contribute is another. I see the roles of each older person as a representative, a leader, and a collaborator on decisions that will contribute to safer neighborhoods, affordable housing, local jobs, and opportunities for all Sheboygan residents to have equitable access to services and programs that create a strong sense of community, belonging, and volunteerism. If I have your vote, you will find a strong collaborator, ethical decision maker, and consistent caring member of this community who only wants to see progression. And I'm a mother of three. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. All right, next is Jesse Rothel. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Jesse Rathel, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I was born in Sheboygan, and besides going to college, I've lived here my entire life. I'm thankful and proud to call Sheboygan my home. Having the world's largest free-flying American flag right here in Sheboygan is amazing. It's a constant reminder of who we are and the unlimited potential we all have as Americans. It is a blessing to have the beautiful Sheboygan lakefront, the historic downtown, our museums, the quarry, our parks, the arts center, and so much more right here in our hometown. We are a growing city that has endless potential when we work together, and it is very exciting to see and to be a part of. I feel that it is time for me to step up and to do even more to serve my community and help improve it. I graduated in four years from Concordia University, Wisconsin in 2012 with a sport and entertainment management degree, as well as a business management degree. I have worked full-time in quality control for nearly the last nine years and counting. <clears throat> the experiences I have had working quality control and studying my degrees can certainly help me be a successful alderman. I can multitask and make sure things get done and that they get done well. I would love to have the chance to be a part of the Common Council and prove to you that I can be a positive addition to the Council. I am eager to serve the people of my district and all of Sheboygan to better this place that we all love. I can't wait to get to work. I appreciate your consideration for the 8th District Alderman position, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have Zachary Rust. Hi, I'm Zach Rust. Uh, I'm young. I know I'm only 26, but our mayor here inspired me to run. So thank you for that. Um, I think it's important that the city council sees labor represented. I am a journeyman electrician. And I work for Peeper Power. I currently am working at the Aurora Hospital on South Taylor Drive that is being built. And I think it's a wonderful building that will bring lots of hope and jobs to Sheboygan. I want to bring uh, more infrastructure. I see a lot of companies that are not in Sheboygan that can get contracts. I'd like to keep those Sheboygan dollars in Sheboygan. So for example, I was told that Spect Electric was only $4,000 more than another company that was outside of Sheboygan for this beautiful city hall building. And I think it's wonderful that everybody decided to spend the money on spec because it is a Sheboygan company and they can use the money because it stays in the city then. I think our Sheboygan roads can always use more work. I uh, I sometimes get frustrated, especially with during the winter. I live on a small side street where we don't get plowed right away and that I drive a little junky Honda Accord and sometimes I get stuck and have to get the shovel out. And I love to see maybe something a little bit better for that. And I'll also see, love to see road repairs on Union Avenue because they, I feel like it isn't a good look for the city to have poor roads in front of Farnsworth Middle School, especially with parents driving their students there every day. I, can, I want to continue to help Sheboygan businesses during the end of this pandemic. I want to try to help them find the workers that are needed. I know that there isn't a lot of big, labor right now because of the unemployment checks. But I think if we can work with local companies, we can make these jobs work for people. And we need to keep our, we need to keep 
employment high so that we can spend more of our time promoting things such as Brat Days, the Levitt Amp music series, and the art fairs that we have, and all the wonderful museums. I also think that adequate housing for all the residents of Sheboygan is a must. I think that uh, $1,200 a month for apartment is too much for most hourly workers in Sheboygan. I think that if we can bring housing that is more affordable to families that need it, I think we can thrive as a community. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Casey Siborski. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Casey Sipiorski, and I live at 2223 South A Street in Sheboygan. My wife, Erica, I, Erica and I and our five kids have lived there for approximately seven years. We're a blended family as well. Um, I've lived in Sheboygan County for most of my life, except for six years when I worked for U.S. Siler and lived in central Wisconsin. I'm not sure how any of you felt growing up in your community, but when I was younger, I thought Sheboygan didn't have a lot to offer, and I couldn't wait to get out. And after I lived in central Wisconsin for six years, um, there was really nothing to do there, and I was super bored. And was really glad to get back to Sheboygan. Um, uh, Sheboygan is really great. Of course, there have been a lot of changes over the years. Um, we've had some significant growth over the last 25 years. Um, I love living here and recognize the gem we have. Uh, Eric and I know, have often talked about that we're never gonna leave. She grew up here as well. Um, overall, our community is safe and a great place to raise a family. We enjoy our neighborhood um, and our nearby parks, and we have hosted several block parties to get to know our neighbors. Um, so how did I end up here tonight? Um, after the election of 2020 and everything that that entailed, I felt very much like I was lied to by every side of the political party, and I was stuck somewhere in the middle. Um, a lot of my friends, families, and the clients that I work with in my financial practice uh, felt the same way. I recognize I can't change much on a national or state level, but I, cannot, I can become not only involved, but engaged in my community here. Um, I can ensure the people in my neighborhood are properly represented, get to know them, what they really want, because it's not about what I want necessarily, but who I'm representing. So I look forward to helping keeping, help keeping Sheboygan safe from some of the yuck that's on a national and state level sometimes. So um, I submitted my letter of interest and resume when uh, Mr. Mayor won, and I figured, oh, I didn't know there was gonna be six of us here tonight, so I'm, I'm glad also to see uh, that our community, our neighborhood wants to be representative. So thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to hopefully working with everybody. Are there any questions? Thank you. All right, now if others could please open up their email um, and their ballot will be, oh, excuse me. Um, all right, so now I'll call for a nomination to open, open up, a motion to call to open up the nominations. Alderperson Feldy. I move that all candidates who provided applications to the city clerk are hereby nominated, that any additional nominations be received from the floor, with voting to be done by open ballot via the instant runoff method, where each voter will rank the candidates in order of preference. If no candidate receives a majority of first choice votes, the candidate with the majority of first choice votes, the candidate with the, the fewest votes will be eliminated and those votes transferred to their second choices. Ties will be broken by looking back to who received the most votes in the previous rounds. The process is repeated until a candidate has, has a majority. A candidate cannot be elected unless he or she is ranked on a majority of ballots. Is there a second? Second. Oh, second by Roberta. All right. All those in, oh, is there a motion to close nominations? So moved. Is there a second? S second. All right. All those in favor of closing the nominations, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, ballots will be closed. Now, please open your email, provided with the link, email to each holders. Votes will be tallied by name, provided to the mayor for an announcement. Ballots will be public and released by attaching them to board docs as soon as after the meeting. I did. If you have any questions, please, please raise your hand. 
And um, Attorney Adams or Meredith will will help you out. Didn't okay. come yet. Meredith is sending it. Is it a question? Or? It's it's sending. Did it Yeah, that's
Yeah, sure. You don't have to. Too. Why can't you fix all the servers? No. Yep, I modified that. Oh, I suppose maybe we should do them. Oops, that was too late. Because we might have to go to them. Now hit results and ballots. Okay. And round one, we didn't even have to go to anyone. So we do have we have somebody who is elected. Yeah, she is. All right. Um, the council has voted and congratulations to Leslie Laster. So we move right into this, so come on up and we'll, we'll swear you in. <laughs> um, yeah, just come on up. And thank you for all the other candidates that uh, attended and put your head in the ring. Stepping up for public services is something truly value and uniquely American. So thank you, everybody, for putting your head in the ring. I'm Leslie Lester. Having been appointed. Having been appointed. To the office of older person. The office of older person. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge. The duties of said office. The duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. And then, Leslie, since you don't have a computer, you'll just have to do a voice vote and let us know how to vote. Thank you. All right. Mayor, mayor appointments, 1.6. Attorney Adams? Uh, 1.6 are the mayor's appointments, submitting appointments for your consideration. Uh, Nancy Maring to the Z Zoning Board of Appeals. Andre Walton to the Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission. John Kaler, Rebecca Clark, and Marge Mattern to the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners. Kathleen Donovan to the Board of Review, Carolyn Lee to the Historic Preservation Commission, Carolyn Miesfeld, Rich Miesfeld, and Dane Schaefer to the Mayor's International Committee, and older persons Trey Mitchell, Barb Feldy, and Dean Decker to the Sheboygan Transit Commission. All right, and those lay over. And uh, 1.7, Mayor's appointments, newly elected older person of District 8 appoint, appointment to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee, Attorney Adams. 
And the mayor does uh, submit that appointment for your consideration uh, to, uh, to uh, submit uh, Alderperson uh, Laster of District 8 to be considered for appointment to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to fill the unexpired term of Ryan Sorensen, whose term expires April 18, 2022. And that lays over. Uh, 1.8, resignation from Nancy Manchin from the Library Board. Attorney Adams? And I it move. Is, it oh. is a resignation from Nancy Manchin. Alderperson Feldy. I move to receive and file. Second. There's been a motion and second to receive and file. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. 1.9, confirmation of, of appointments. Kate Kruger uh, as the finance director and treasurer effective June 1st, 2021. Attorney Adams. And pursuant to the municipal code, uh, recommending that Caitlin Krieger be appointed as the finance director treasurer for the city of Sheboygan, effective June 1, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Motion and second. Any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. So check your board docs. And then Leslie, you can give us a thumbs up for <laughs> There you go. That makes nine eyes with Leslie. That's approved. 1.10, confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney Adams. Uh, the mayor submits the following appointments for your consideration. To the Board of License Examiners, Craig Sider as a first alternate. To the Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission, Marilyn Montemayor and Ka Lee. To the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners, Michael Fro and Sergeant Timothy Patton as a non-voting representative. To the Capital Improvements Commission, Alderperson Roberta Felicki Paneski. To the City Plan Commission, Marilyn Montemayor. To the Library Board, Kathy Norman, William Bolson, Barbara Alvarez. To the Mayor's International Committee, Alexandria King Close and Cole Phillips. To the Redevelopment Authority, James Conway. To the Sheboygan Transit Commission, Roy Kloos, Sarah Kanaub, and Heather Cleveland. And to the Sheboygan County Emergency Medical Services Council, Alderperson Roberta Felicki Paneski. Alderperson Feldy. I move to confirm. Second. Motion and a second. Is this, is this, is this uh, one to lay over? Nope, this is approval. This is confirmed. And this is a roll call vote, so check your board docs. And Leslie's giving us a thumbs up. Thank you. That's nine eyes. All right. Now we'll go to Mayor's announcements. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, well, first off, I'd like to welcome the new older person for District 8, Leslie Laster. Um, this, is, this is a historic moment right now. For the first time in the history of the city, we do now have a female majority on the city council. So I think that is, that's, that is a milestone for me to be proud of. All right, uh, first off, just wanna talk about the American Rescue Plan. Uh, this has been a huge topic in the news that we've uh, have been working on over the last few, few days. Uh, Administrator Wolf, myself, and uh, Planning Director Ched Pelichek are working on developing a solid plan to ensure that the funds that we use um, will truly benefit the community so that we can get, get the relief that it was intended for. Uh, Sheboygan will be awarded around $22.8 million, and this will be in two trenches. Uh, $1.4 million will receive this year, and one, 11, excuse me, 11.4 million this year, and 11.4 million next year as well. Um, we're still waiting for final guidance from the state and federal government just to make sure what we can use the funds for are appropriate. Um, while the guidelines are still very limited right now, our priorities for these funds will primarily be used for the water utility intake project as well as the wastewater treatment project as well. 
um, working with local businesses um, and waiting anticipation for the state um, and the guidance that and programs that they set up additionally as well, we're looking to develop um, a new plan to support our local businesses. Um, in terms of COVID-19 uh, COVID and the pandemic that is still continuing on, as of today, there are 91 active cases in the county. Three individuals are in the hospital. Sheboygan County is still at a high burden rate. Um, however, the average uh, number in our community is, is decreasing and our numbers are, are truly decreasing because of the success of the vaccine and how that's been rolling out. Um, definitely encourage folks to go to the Sheboygan County Public Health's website to get a vaccine and set up appointment if you have not yet done so as well. Um, so those are my announcements. So proclamations. So May is, um, excuse me, um, May, yeah, May is, is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and today we have um, some friends from Mental Health America here today. So I'm gonna present a proclamation, whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and all Americans face challenges in life that impact their mental health, especially during this pandemic. And whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of, burden of mental health conditions, whereas there are practical tools that all people can use to provide and improve their mental health access and resiliency, Whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and resident share this burden of mental health across the board, it is our responsibility to promote mental health wellness and support prevention and treatment efforts. Now, therefore, I, Ryan Sorensen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim this month, May of 2021, as Mental Health Awareness Month. And in the City of Sheboygan, I call upon all our residents, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools to commit our community to increasing awareness and understanding to mental health and the impact that it has on our community. And therefore, I, your two up, understand in my hand, caused by the great seal of the city of Sheboygan, to have fixated that the 17th day of May in this year of the Lord, 2021, Ryan Sorensen. So present this to our friends at Mental Health America. Did you want to say any words? And then Todd will take it from here. Um, thank you so much for recognizing uh, mental well-being in Sheboygan County. We appreciate all the efforts from our partners and our collaborators uh, throughout the county, uh, raising the voice and the platform to reduce stigma and bring our community to mental well-being. Thank you. All right, moseying right along, we'll move into the consent agenda, 2.1. Elder Persenfeldy. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. It's been a motion, second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I have a question. Elder Persenfeldy uh, Pineski. Res, uh, 2.16 and 2.17, I believe they're the same thing, and one asks for the resolution and one asks for the ordinance. Is that accurate, and do we usually do them at the same time? I can answer that if you'd like, <laughs> Attorney Please. Adams. So uh, to, they... The recommendation is to adopt the resolution, which is uh, correct. So it is correct in the uh, on the agenda as far as what the recommendation is. It is not common that we dually refer items, and there's a reason we don't typically do that. But in this case, it was dually referred, and that's why you uh, have uh, both of those items on there because both committees made a recommendation. Had there been different recommendations from the two committees, we would have had to deal with that, but we don't have that problem today. Great, thank you very much. Great, additional questions? This is a roll call vote, so we'll utilize board text for that. Alderperson Lester. To 
Nine eyes. All right. Uh, report of officers 3.1 through 3.4 will be referred to various committees. All right. Next, we'll take up 4.1. Okay, this is a special um, special resolution that uh, we're gonna be presenting today. Um, 4.1 resolution number 8-21-22 by older persons Decker, Prella, Savalio, Salazar, and Boren, commemorating the recognition of David Beevil being selected as the recipient for the 2021 Samuel L. Greeley Award. Um, so this, this is uh, a unique circumstance. Uh, Director Beevil has been nominated uh, to receive this prestigious award for his commitment to uh, the work that he's done um, over the many, many years in the Public Works Department and for the city of Sheboygan and his commitment to public service. Um, so we uh, presented this um, commemorating resolution as well, um, as well as it coincides with Public Works Week. Um, so I have another proclamation uh, that is gonna be concurrent with, with, with this item on the agenda as well. Um, so public work professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities and services that are vital to the importance of sustainability, resilience to our, the growth and strength of our community and to public safety, high quality of life, well-being of people of Sheboygan. These infrastructure facilities and services could not be provided without the dedication efforts of the public work professionals who are engineers, managers, employees at all levels of government and the private sector. Whereas it is the in the public interest of all residents, civic leaders, children, and the greater Sheboygan area to gain knowledge and to maintain the ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of the public works and public works department and their programs that they provide. Whereas the year 2021 marks the 61st annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, I, Ryan Sorensen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim May 16th through the 22nd 2021 as National Public Works Week. Um, so David Beeble, would you come up and uh, accept this proclamation? And then, would you like any words that you'd like to say? Thanks. Thanks, Mayor. Um, it is National Public Works Week and um, the theme this year is Stronger Together. And that's truly the case in our public works industry. And, and tonight we have some of the team members, Joe Curlin, Superintendent of Parks and Forestry, Rick Nye, Supervisor of Fleets, and Mike Wilmis, Superintendent of Facilities and Traffic, Dawn, our business manager in the office, and as well, Ryan Sazma, our city engineer. But it's, it's the team behind it. We have 100 employees. And during this week, uh, on our Facebook page and on our website, I encourage uh, all of you to either look at our annual report as well as we'll have highlights of our individual employees and some of the key work that they do on a daily basis, keeping the city running. Um, one, of, one of the employees this, this past week I heard made, a, made a, a, a statement kind of, they kind of struck me because during this pandemic, many, many folks have been working from home or, and basically the statement was, well, you can't pick up the garbage or fix the streets in a Zoom meeting. And so it, it, it kind of, uh, struck a chord with that. Uh, lastly, the, the, I appreciate the resolution and the Sam Greeley Award by the American Public Works Association is, is it kind of, it was an honor. It kind of took me by surprise. Uh, and I thought it, it really wasn't um, anything just because of longevity, but apparently it, it's, it's, quite, it's quite rare that someone has worked in the same community for 30 plus years as their continual employment, as well as being an active member in the association. So that was quite uh, a nice surprise this year at the conference. So um, the city has uh, been a wonderful place to work and I yeah, really like where we're headed and um, it's gonna be a good ride. So let's keep up the good work. Is there a motion to approve 4.1? Motion by Prilla. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Flicky Paneski. Any discussion on this? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That's approved. Thank you, David, for all your hard work and dedication to the Public Works Department, as well as the staff um, and everybody that puts in their time and dedication. It's, it's truly appreciated. Thank you, everybody. Okay, 4.2, resolution number 152122 by Elder Persons Feldy and Flick Paneski, authorizing the mayor to execute all documents related to the U.S. Department of Treasury Coronavirus Local Focal Recovery Funds. Elder Person Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I ask for a suspension of the rules. Any objection? Please proceed with the motion. I move to adopt the resolution. There's been a Second. motion. There's been a motion and second. Any further discussion on this item? Alder Person Lauren? Uh, this is this is on the document itself, not about suspension. So can I go ahead? Yep. Uh, I had an interesting discussion earlier today with City Administrator Wolf regarding this document and I, I, I read the document in, in complete detail over the weekend and I was wondering if maybe uh, uh, City Administrator Wolf could share some of his comments about how this is going to work as far as the people involved himself, the mayor and the city clerk and how, how this is being set up as a separate account for these dollars coming in from the federal government and maybe just give us a little background on what it looks like we may be able to spend some of this money on. Administrator Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Alder Bourne. Um, the, the, main, the main piece here is that we understand that anytime uh, the state or federal is involved, that you, you need to proceed with caution, right? So what we did as a city is we put, we started a, a separate fund so that the American Rescue Plan um, monies, as the mayor had stated earlier, will be in two trenches, 11.4 this year, um, and the funds are actually on their way, and 11.4 next year. So those funds will go into a separate fund that will allow the city to manage and maintain um, it in a separate entity so that it doesn't mix and mingle with the, with the city funding and finances. It's very important that we keep separation for all funding. The other process is the fact that uh, in the American, uh, American Rescue Plan um, details, the only thing that it can be used for as far as uh, infrastructure is wastewater, water, and broadband. Well, broadband doesn't apply to the city of Sheboygan because it's, it has nothing to do with speeding up broadband. It has nothing to do with speeding up 5G or anything like that. It has to do with reaching out to our constituents. So broadband really doesn't affect the city of Sheboygan from that broad stroke of the brush. When it comes to wastewater and water, those are two projects that, as we all know, as uh, city alders and, and city um, staff, we know that we have shovel ready projects that are in process in wastewater and water. So this is just perfect timing when you think about it because we literally can roll it out and use some of this money to help fund it. We've also been working together with wastewater and water department to say, okay, how much can we save our constituents at, if we were actually to use some of these funds to reduce the borrowing cost, which will affect our citizens for the next 30, up to 30 years in, in borrowing. So when, when we look at that, it's approximately a 30% increase in wastewater and water if, these, if this debt process goes through. So using some of this funding to help reduce that will help our constituents, not just this year or next year, but for years and years down the road. And the spirit of the, the, the American Rescue Plan funding is to help our constituents, not just today, but also into the future to help us through the pandemic that we've all been affected by. So the additional funding that we're receiving, we're also looking at how can we support our constituents and in, in today and setting them up uh, to, be, um, to help them fiscally, but also so that we don't put programs out there that are going to be short term and not help them in the long term. We also want to help our, our, our small and local businesses through these pandemic situations. So in essence, what we're going to be doing is looking at applying programs. Some may be new, some may be just boosting them up a little bit, but we also want to take a breath and take step back and say, what is the state doing? What is the federal doing to make sure that we're not basically rolling out the same programs that the state and federal are going to have. 
We also know that there's also a potential for a, an infrastructure bill that's coming. So what does that all mean? It means that we all need to kind of step back. Let's roll out some of this money as, as efficiently as possible, but make sure that we do it in a strategic and, and fiscal manner. And that's what we're doing as a, as a group. And we'll be bringing that forward to the council for, for review in the future. Any questions? Any follow-up? Well, thank you. Right. Any other discussions on this item? S all right, this is a roll call vote. Uh, items 4.3 through 4.8 will be referred to various committees. Reports of committees. Um, 5.1 will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, 5.2 RC number 2221-22 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred direct referral resolution number 72122 by Older Persons Mitchell Paneski authorized the continuation of the self-insured workers' compensation um, program recommended is adopting the resolutions, receiving receive the RC and adopt the resolutions. Older, older person Mitchell. Thank you, Mary. Make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion on this item? All right. This is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, 6.1 will be referred to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney Adams. All right, 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2021 and June 30, 2023. Uh, that will be referred to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee. 7.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2022. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee. And uh, 7.3 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. And that will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. All right. We've exhausted the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. <coughs>